Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look at who is Gonzalo Ramos. Remember to subscribe if you're new and smash that like button. And if you've got any football related questions, call the sponsor of today's video, the Athletic Emergency Football Hotline. But anyway, let's get this party started. Born in Oliao on the 20th of June 2001, Gonzalo Mateus Ramos is a full Portuguese international who plays for Benfica. Ramos began his career at local side Olinese in 2009 and had trials at Sporting Club Portugal at nine years old, ultimately being rejected due to his slight frame. Three years later, Ramos joined Benfica's youth setup in 2013. Playing his way through the ranks, Ramos made his debut for Benfica B in January 2019 at 17 years old. Less than 18 months later, Ramos made his senior debut for the first team as an 87th minute substitute. Within six minutes, Ramos scored his first and second goals of his professional career. Since then, Gonzalo Ramos has gone on to score 28 goals and register 10 assists in 80 appearances for Benfica. But more impressively, he scored 18 goals in 23 caps of the Portuguese national team, including four goals in five first-team games. A centre-forward, Gonzalo Ramos is very versatile. Deployed at number 10 and in a two-man forward line as a second striker, Ramos has adapted very well to the lone striker role for Roger Schmidt this season. In fact, in 21 appearances under Schmidt for Benfica, Ramos has been directly involved in more goals than under any other coach in his career. Ramos is quite an active striker. His standout attribute is his finishing, but this is supported by very sharp movement, anticipation for deliveries and a very good awareness of where a player players are on the pitch around him. Whilst he's not lightning fast, he's got good acceleration and he links well with his teammates. All in all, Ramos is a very well-rounded striker that doesn't have any glaring holes in his game. When his side has the ball, Ramos isn't static. He's always making various off-the-ball movements. He's comfortable at dropping into deep areas to receive passes. Ramos is a good striker to link the play. However, he can also pull into the wide areas and make intelligent runs into the channels. In and around the penalty area, Ramos combines intelligent movement with acceleration and good anticipation to create separation with defenders. Darting ahead of the opposition to reach the ball first is how he scores a lot of his goals. Notable runs we see include a blindside run from from the left hand side often between the left back and the left center back as well as runs to the near post ramos also drops off the line well to link the play before getting into the box to finish off chances a great example of this came against esteril last season after esteril try and clear mate is in possession he passes it to rafa silva who comes inside and finds ramos ramos then slides gilberta down the line and breaks into the box receiving a low cutback from the brazilian controlling the ball before slotting it into the bottom corner granted this came from when Ramos was playing in a front two as Yeremchuk occupied the centre-backs but the intelligence to drop off and find space finding the right pass to Gilberto and getting himself into the box to put the move away shows his suitability for a possession-based side. It's no surprise that Ramos has scored more goals this season playing as a lone forward for a possession-based Roger Smith side than he managed last season in nearly double the amount of minutes playing in a more direct approach to make more space for Darwin Nunes. And his improvement has been highlighted by his manager. Speaking to Ebola in October, Schmidt said, I saw some games from last season. In our system, he plays in the center. Last year, he orbited around Darwin Nunes. He's a player who works a lot for the team, who presses a lot without the ball, and who is difficult to stop for the opponent. His newfound scoring streak shows the right timing and quality. His suitability as a lone forward is also supported by his impressive finishing ability. A confident goal scorer, Ramos can put away chances with a variety of finishes, from powerful snapshots like we saw against Switzerland, to death lobs to chip the goalkeeper rushing off his line. Ramos can do it all. In fact, his nine goals in League Portugal this season have come from just 36 shots. Meanwhile, from open plays, conversion rate jumps up to nearly 27%. Gonzalo Ramos also has very good awareness of his surroundings. We see this when he receives passes in the final third as he can quickly lay the ball off for a teammate often this can be quite a simple pass but we do see more technical flicks around the corner which can create chances out of nothing by catching the opposition out What's more is that Ramos is good without the ball. Quite a switched on player, Ramos works hard defensively and presses well. In fact, in Benfica's 3-0 win over Victoria Guimaraes last season, Ramos personally forced two turnovers in four minutes, leading to chances worth a combined expected goals of 1.37. 
So, The Athletic have challenged me to a World Cup quiz, asking me 10 questions about the beautiful game. To get the answers, we've got the Athletic Emergency Football Hotline on speed dial, telling me whether I'm right or wrong. Guys, get your pens and paper ready, get in the comments below with your answers. Let's get this party started. Question number one, who is the youngest player to have scored in a World Cup final? This one's an easy one. Pele. That's correct. Uh, the youngest player to ever score at a World Cup final was, in fact, Pele. Uh, he was 17 years old when he scored a brace in a 5-2 win against Sweden. Question number two. How many times has the World Cup final been decided on penalties? I am actually a penalty expert at international football level. First up, we had the Italy versus Brazil penalty shootout in 94. And then, of course, the Zinedine Zidane headbutt, Italy-France in 2006. So I'm going to go with two. That's correct. The World Cup final has been decided on penalties twice. Italy were involved both times in 1994 and 2006. Question number three. What was Mario Mandzukic the first to do in 2018? I think Mario Mandzukic was the first player to score in a World Cup final and Champions League final and be on the losing side. That is incorrect. It was actually Mario Mandzukic who was the first player to score an own goal in a World Cup final. He did redeem himself with a goal, but they went on to lose 4-2 to France. Question number four. Who was the first player to take a penalty in a World Cup final shootout? Again, penalty expert, Beresi, easy money. That is correct. The first player to take a penalty in a World Cup final was Italy's Franco Beresi, which he failed to convert. Four players have scored in two World Cup finals. Can you name two of them? Of course, Zinedine Zidane, 98 and in... 2006 and then I'm also going to throw Pele into the mix as well. That is correct. The four players to have scored in two World Cup finals are Pele, Zinedine Zidane, Paul Breitner and Vava. Question number five. In which city was the last time we saw a crowd of over 100,000 people in attendance for a final? That of course is the Maracanã in Rio de Janeiro. Easy. Biggest stadium of all time. That's incorrect. The last time we saw a crowd of over 100,000 people at a World Cup final was in Mexico City in 1986. Which goalkeeper holds the record for 10 clean sheets at the World Cup final? Bit of a tough one, but I think you've got to think about longevity. Goalkeepers making multiple tournaments. France dominant in the early uh, 2000s, late 90s. I'm going to go with Fabian Barthez. That is incorrect. With 10 clean sheets between 1982 and 1990, Peter Shilton holds the World Cup record. Who is the only European player to have won the World Cup as a coach and as a player? This is very, very, very topical, Didier Deschamps with France. That's correct. Franz Beckenbauer and Didier Deschamps are the only two to have won the World Cup as both a player and a coach. Question number nine. Who won the player of the tournament, the 2002 World Cup, which Brazil famously won? Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, Kaka. I'm going to go with Ronaldinho. That is incorrect. The player of the tournament was actually Oliver Kahn, the only goalkeeper to ever win this award. And question number 10. Who was the first player to score a penalty in a World Cup final? Dutch. Can't think of his name. Cruyff? That's incorrect. The first player to score a penalty in a World Cup final was actually Johan Nieskens. The goal came in the 90th second, making it the fastest goal in a World Cup final too. But anyway, guys, there are my answers for the quiz. Get into the comments below, put your answers in, and let me know what you got out of 10. Oh, we're suspect with this one. Mario Mandzukic, he did score in a World Cup and Champions League final and was on the losing side, but hey... Who's asking? If you've got any burning football questions that you need to find the answers to, then call the Athletic Emergency Football Hotline on the number on screen right now. If you want to find out any more information, then check out the link in the description below. So what's next for the 21-year-old? With a little over 4,000 professional minutes for Benfica, Ramos hasn't played a lot of professional football, and it does show his game is still raw with inconsistencies in his performances. But with more game time, will bring out his potential. His hat-trick against Switzerland showed he can perform on the biggest stage. He just needs to replicate that level for consecutive games from now on. So I think staying at Benfica makes a lot of 
of sense. If he can spend another 12 to 18 months playing week in, week out at Benfica, Ramos will be ready to play for any team in Europe. That being said, money talks, and Ramos will be at the top of a lot of transfer shortlists. If he were to make a move, Manchester United would be the pick of the big teams, arguably the biggest team in Europe without an established number nine. Ramos could continue to get more game time at Old Trafford. What's more is, according to reports by The Athletic, Ten Hag is known to be an admirer of Ramos, and we've seen Manchester United back the Dutchman's targets. Alternatively, Bayern will be in the market for a long-term replacement for Robert Lewandowski, and the lower standard of the Bundesliga could be a good mid-step for the good of Ramos's career. Regardless, I think we'll be seeing a lot more of Gonzalo Ramos at the very top of the footballing pyramid at some point in his career. But anyway, guys, what do you think? Where will Ramos be playing his football next season? And where should he move next? Let me know in the comments below. And remember to call the Athletic Emergency Football Hotline with all your footballing questions. I've been Statman Dave, subscribe if you're new. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?